Hello and welcome to another edition of Anne's Garden. Today I'm going to talk about house plants and how they can add to your home. And then I'm going to take you on a walk through Eastern's Prairie Meadow, which is in full bloom right now. Let's get started. House plants have been enjoying a spike in popularity the past few years. They've always been around, of course, but now they're much easier to find and in a much greater variety. There are house plants for just about any situation or decor, and most are surprisingly easy to grow and keep happy. House plants are good for you, too, helping to improve the air quality as well as adding beauty and color. Every room can be improved by a living plant. Here are a few examples of my own collection, which is just a small sampling of what is available. This is a Monstera Deliciosa, which I'm sure I mispronounced that, but often called uh, Monsteras simply or Swiss cheese plants. There are several different varieties, including some uh, very vining ones, and there's some, I've seen pictures of some variegated ones, quite expensive. Uh, I love this plant. Each leaf, as each leaf unfurls uh, different splits in the leaves up here. Each leaf is unique. These are called fenestrations. Uh, this plant I've had a little over a year, so it's probably uh, a teenager, still fairly young. Um, eventually, as you can see, each leaf is a little bit different. Eventually, it will also produce holes in the, in the leaves here. So there'd be like a hole here. The reason for that, is that it allows light to go through these leaves and reach the lower part of the plant. It's a very generous plant. These are easy to propagate too. So if you like this, you can get one. And they're pretty easy to find now. Um, you pretty soon can have a whole little forest of them. Here's a plant combo I've had for several years now. Uh, it's a begonia and a rabbit foot fern. I used to put it out in the summer on my front porch, but I got so I liked it so much I kept it inside and it has been very happy here. I have lots of diffuse light for it, water it about once a week. You can see the furry roots here. This is where it gets its name, rabbit foot fern. The fronds, you can just see a frond starting here, grow from the the furry roots and expand. Here's another one over here starting up. Um, very happy here. Really pretty, really interesting plant. Here's another fun fern. This one is called a kangaroo paw fern. And let me lift it up here. You can see it has these large, long roots, kind of fuzzy, similar to the rabbit foot fern. Um, I also like the way the leaves develop, like here's a brand new baby. Here's one, and it will expand and grow, and here's one that's about teenage. And then finally, here's a full grown frond. Really simple to grow. It really likes this uh, northern light here I've got it under a window. Just likes to be watered about once a week, and it's very happy here. Here's another very modest collection. These are begonias. These are all Rex begonias. Uh, I have not always been a fan of begonias, but in the last few years, it seems like the breeders have come up with some beautiful foliage designs. Look at the colors and the patterns on them. And here's a tip, they make great house plants. I used to take them out in the summer or plant them outside in pots. And I found out that they do great inside too. They don't need a huge amount of light. Um, regular watering once a week and they're very happy. And they're very beautiful, look at those colors. This guy is, believe it or not, a philodendron. A split leaf philodendron. The f very different from the vine, old fashioned vine you might be thinking of when you think of philodendron. The family is huge and has a large number of easy to grow, interesting plants. 
Here's a fiddle leaf fig. Uh, these plants have been the darling of chic interior designers for a few years now. When they first became the it plant, they were hard to find and expensive, but now they're much more reasonably priced and easier to find. Striking foliage and growth pattern mean they're here to stay and they're easy to grow. Sansevieria, or snake plants, are an old-fashioned favorite, but these are not just your grandmother's snake plants. These come in a variety of colors and leaf patterns, and they're nearly impossible to kill. Believe it or not, orchids are easy to grow and very rewarding. Okay, here's my modest orchid collection. As you can see, I do have quite a bit in bloom right now. These are all moth orchids, very easy to grow. I call all of these re-bloomers. That is, when I bought them, they were in bloom. I enjoyed the bloom, and then when they were finished, I cut off the uh, bloom stalks, kept them watered, and kept them in bright light here, bright indirect light. And pretty soon, they all, all started, one by one, sending up new bloom stalks and started blooming as you can see. Orchids are great value for the money. First of all, you can find them very inexpensively. I found them at grocery stores. I found them at the home improvement stores and their garden departments. I found them, one of my favorite places to look for them is Trader Joe's in Iowa City. Um, they're quite uh, inexpensive from those places. And the amount of bloom you get from them uh, makes them very, very good value. When I say that orchids are a great value, I really mean it. A flower spi spike on a moth orchid will bloom for two to three months, and after a period of rest will bloom again and again, all for an initial investment of 10 to 15 to $20. Here are some tips for growing houseplants. They're very simple, I promise. First of all, do your research. I've got some books listed here at the end of the episode that will help you with that. Next, always choose good lighting or appropriate lighting for the plant. And third, don't overwater. I pick one day a week, and that's the day that I water all of my house plants. As part of its Green City initiative, the City of Davenport has several reduced mowing sites, one of which is here at the Eastern Library. Planted with wildflowers and grasses, most of which are native, these sites help reduce pollution, promote water quality, and reduce runoff, and act as a haven for wildlife. Right now, the prairie at Eastern is especially pretty with lots of wildflowers blooming and lots of birds. This area is very accessible and provides an oasis of beauty and calm in the middle of the city. Let's enjoy the sights and sounds for a few minutes.
we've got some great books about houseplants at the library. And so I'm gonna show you a few of my favorites. This first one is called The New Plant Parent by Daryl Cheng. Uh, he has a lot of information on how to grow them. One of the uh, distinguishing features of this one is how much time Daryl spends on the light needs of a plant. He even goes so far as to measure light candle and uh, compare how well a plant does in each one and how to get the most correct light. Not all plants want full sun, of course, but how to get the light that a plant needs. Of course, he also has a lot of basic information on growing, propagating, and so forth. Um, Daryl and our next book author, Hilton Carter, are both on Instagram, so you'll find lots of um, information on their accounts uh, almost daily about what they're growing and tips on how to grow with uh, all different kinds of houseplants. So um, Hilton has a beautiful book here too. Again, lots of information on choosing plants, caring for them, arranging them. One thing I like about this book is he visits other houseplant fans and looks at how they've arranged and used plants in their homes. So you get an idea, a real world idea, not just a stylized idea of um, how plants can be used and enjoyed. Another really interesting, really good book. This one will give you an excuse, if you need one, to get more houseplants because it will show you some really great ideas on how to use them. Um, here's one in an entryway. Um, combining them into a container. You don't have to have just one plant, one kind of plant in a pot. You can combine them like this, make a really pretty centerpiece. Um, different and unusual ways to for stands and for hangers, for hanging plants. Um, here's one in a picture frame surrounding your living room with plants. I don't see why not. I would do that. Um, some really unusual and more modern ideas on how to use your plants. Just how much they add even to a minimalist uh, room if you're really uh, minimalist and don't want a lot of clutter, a little bit of green can really add beautifully without clutter. And finally, here's a new one on growing orchids, Orchid Modern. This is by Mark, yep, can't pronounce that, but I'll have the information in the notes below for all of these. In fact, I forgot, this one is by Baylor Chapman. I'll have that information too. This has a lot of ideas on how to grow your plants. I mean, um, growing them um, in a hanging picture frame, combining them with other plants. Here's a, putting an orchid on a piece of driftwood, um, using them in very unusual but beautiful ways. And a wreath with some succulents and some air plants in a terrarium. Really lots of fun. There's also the good basic information on growing orchids. Uh, they mostly concentrate on, um, that's a lady slipper, but they mostly concentrate on the moth orchids, which are the easiest by far to grow in a house. In fact, they're ridiculously simple to grow. A lot of information about orchids, their history, where they come from, and then in the back, some favorite orchids. So again, I'll have all the information for these in the notes below. Be sure and get your reserves and you're gonna really enjoy these books. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.